Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video I'd like to speak with you about how the Senate voted to overturn an EPA ruling to cut emissions. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, in your trucking careers, as well as cover the loads we've successfully booked for our customers consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services. As always guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you've provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about the Senate, what's going on with this over turning of this EPA ruling, you know, emissions and all the things that we've talked about in the, uh, in the past and previous videos for which I'll leave little cards in a corner so you can explore those topics in depth. Now, the idea here is that obviously the EPA wants to cut emissions, making rulings uh, that are more stringent, more, uh, you, know, you know, difficult for trucking companies and they force them to comply in order to stay in business. Now, we know that much uh, because you know, we have the EPA rulings on, you know, DEF and DPF and, you know, EGRs and all the other requirements for uh, pollution control and particulate matter. Now, the president, uh, Joe Biden, he actually said that he'd veto the bill and uh, the EPA's Knox rule, which would actually... Uh, this, this Knox bill was actually finalized back in December of 2022, is now in April coming to life and ultimately would affect heavy and medium sized uh, uh, vehicles, model year 2027 and, and older. And we actually made a video, I'll leave a little card in the corner for that uh, regarding this part as well. And. Uh, Ultimately, there are you know people that are for it, others are against it, and uh, people that are against it are saying that it you know claiming that it would make trucks simply too expensive uh, on the small business owners, and it would actually increase the costs on the supply chain. And you know obviously trucking is already very very expensive. Lots of companies are ha having a hard time you know making ends meet. Lots of companies are going out of business. The supply chain is uh, you know is in shambles. That's been the case for a long time, and you know not everyone agrees that this is the right time to make things even more difficult. Now, on the other hand, you have the White House that basically says it would cut pollution, it would boost public health, and it would also advance environmental justice, you know, whatever that means. So under the Congressional Review Act, the, the idea is that a majority vote in both chambers of Congress, which would be the House of Representatives as well as the Senate, if... Um, if they both, uh, you know, basically if Congress votes on it, uh, you know, they can reverse the ruling. Now, if you're ever interested in how our Congress works, House of Representatives, what it consists of, how the rules are made, et cetera, et cetera, we made an in-depth video. I'll leave a little card in the corner. You guys can take a look at that as well. But basically, uh, it, they, could, they could reverse the ruling. And ultimately, they, you know, I don't know if this, this might be really, uh, you know, for the best because this new standard is 80% more stringent than current standards on the books today. And what could ultimately happen is that prices for new trucks will go up so quickly and by so much that you know truckers basically would end up holding on to their old equipment that technically is what's uh, being asked to replace because this older equipment is higher emitting so you're making full circle and you're actually getting people to hold on to the old equipment that's creating the pollution that you're trying to get rid of so a little bit backwards now this would also force small businesses uh, or business owners to basically close down their businesses and, uh, and, and, and other companies would simply raise their rates, right? Because there'd be less companies offering the same service, less competition, and race, rates would have to go up. And ultimately, it would be the consumers who would pay uh, you know, more money to an ever uh, smaller and smaller group of basically people, companies, organizations, whatever you want to call it. So it's the consumer that, that would foot the bill at the end of the day. And this Knox rule... Uh, plus the EPA's uh, GHG or greenhouse emissions uh, proposal back in April would, would actually squeeze small truck fleets out of business because of higher costs in the first place when you combine those two bills together. And some say that this is the government's, uh, basically the government's push to get consumers to buy electric vehicles, right? So, and, and again, we made videos about that. You know, our infrastructure isn't really there, and that's it. that is a concern because the national charging infrastructure network remains absent for specifically heavy-duty commercial trucks. So, if you're trying to get those trucks on the road and and not polluting as much and using electric, uh, you know, batteries and things like that, you got to charge them. And if you don't have the infrastructure to do that, how do you expect these guys to go uh, OTR, right? Now. 
The more interesting point is what do Class A CDL truck drivers really think about this? And they're quite skeptical about uh, electric vehicle costs because they are going to be considerably more money. Mileage ranges because, uh, you know, let's be honest, right now they're pretty, pretty short. Uh, battery weight, we've talked about that recently in a recent video, how each battery weighs about 8,000 pounds and you need uh, two of those batteries, so that would cut down on a total amount of GVW available to actually haul freight, which would require more trucks to actually be on the road, which actually creates more pollution. But ultimately, they're concerned about those things as well as safety, as well as charging times, and ultimately availability. So, you know, we'd love to hear you guys weigh in in the comment section below. Please leave your comments down there and make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. For now, I'm gonna switch over to camera. We're gonna look over the loads that we book for our customers, and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back. Let's take a look at some of these loads. Uh, rates are still down, but we're still able to get decent growth, decent rates uh, for a lot of our drivers. And uh, if you want to make this kind of money, certainly welcome to get in touch with us. All the information is in the corner. You can just call or text or go to our website and we'll get in touch with you. So let's get started with a reefer. This one's really interesting. Uh, produce is starting to come out. Come, uh, This is a, a one pick a uh, ton of drops and it's coming out of uh, Dayton, Oregon with drops in Finley, Pennsylvania, Coatesville, Pennsylvania, uh, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, Ashton, Pennsylvania, Wilmington, Delaware, and a final in Milton, Delaware. Now, this is a 40,000 pound load of produce running 45 degrees on a reefer, and uh, <coughs> it's a total of 3,024 miles booked at 6,900 bucks, got them 228 a mile, and that's the only load they did in, uh, during the week. In fact, they ran for six days, Wednesday to Tuesday, uh, 3,024 miles, 6,900 bucks on a single load, 220 a mile uh, did an excellent job I would say in this market this is a great job especially with the load losing weight and becoming lighter and lighter as they uh, deliver these drops next we got ourselves a dry van coming out of st. Joseph Missouri going to Pierre South Dakota with a 41,000 pound load of agricultural chemicals it's 530 miles booked at 1700 bucks got them 321 a mile excellent job then Harold South Dakota to Enid Oklahoma with a 44,000 pound load of uh, palletized sunflower seeds 691 miles big, uh, booked at 1550 got them 224 a mile mile. Then uh, Park City, Kansas with a one pick four dropper going to uh, Goldsby, Oklahoma. Uh, Moore, Oklahoma, San Marcos, Texas, and a final in Houston, Texas. It's a 32,000 uh, pound dry load of uh, basically dry goods. 783 miles booked at 1,900 bucks. Got them 243 a mile. And they finished off with Silsby, uh, Texas going to Harrison, Arkansas with a 41,000 pound paper load. Uh, 1,500, uh, excuse me, 512 miles booked at 1130, got them 221 a mile. All the loads they did a great job on, a week on a road, Thursday to Thursday, ended up grossing $6,280 in a regular solo dry van, ran 2,516 loaded miles, got them an average of 250 per loaded mile. Excellent, excellent job, guys. Very well done for dispatch as well as uh, the driver on this one. Next, we got ourselves another reefer coming out of Garner, North Carolina, going to Savannah, Georgia, with a 45,000 pound load of beverages, 316 miles booked at 790 bucks, got them 250 a mile on a quick short run. Then Pooler, Georgia, going to Lakeland, Florida, with a 41,000 pound load of uh, bottled water. It's a 328 mile run for a thousand bucks, got them 305 a mile. Great job. Then. Uh, Looks like, a, was this a three picker? Yeah, three picks, two drops, coming out of Plant City, Florida, Manor, Georgia, and Omega, Georgia, going to Indiana, Indianola, Mississippi, and uh, Pontotoc, uh, Pontotoc, Mississippi, with a 40,000 pound load of vegetables at 36 degrees on a reefer, 962 miles booked at 28.85, got them three bucks on a dot, uh, even. And they finished off with Florence, Alabama to Gainesville, Georgia with a 43,000 pound load of frozen chicken at zero degrees on a reefer, 317 miles booked at 899 bucks, got them 284 a mile. So excellent job there. Another seven day run, solo reefer, 1,923 loaded miles. So not a huge amount of miles booked, but they, they still ended up grossing $5,574 at an average of 290 per loaded mile. Average 290 a loaded mile. Guys, excellent, excellent job.
Then we got ourselves a dry van at a Laredo, Texas, um, going to Hillsboro, Kansas. It's a 45,000 pound load of organic agave uh, syrup, 829 miles, booked at 1850, got them 223 a mile. Then Hutchinson, Kansas, going to a valley in Oklahoma with a 44,000 pound load of uh, cardboard boxes, 409 miles, booked at 1157, got them 283 a mile there. Then Texarkana, Texas to Plymouth, Minnesota with a 38,000 pound load of uh, food equipment. It's uh, 916 miles booked to 1750, got them booked 91 on that one, but it's totally worth it because out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, going to Mandan, North Dakota, uh, 26,000 pound light load of uh, dry goods, 431 miles booked at 1150, got them 267 a mile. That's uh, seven days on a road there, Tuesday to Tuesday, ended up grossing 5907 uh, on their seven days, ran 2,585 loaded miles, got an average of 229 per loaded mile average. Then another dry van coming out of Greenville, Tennessee, going to Menominee, Wisconsin with a 10,000 pound light load of dry goods, 916 miles booked at 1655, got them a buck 81 on that one. Then Chaska, Minnesota to Imperial, Missouri with a 44,000 pound load of printed books, 565 miles booked at 1200 bucks, got them 212 a mile. Then St. Louis, Missouri to Ralston, uh, Nebraska with a 32,000 pound load of steel products. It's a 437 mile run, booked at 1100 bucks, got them 252 a mile. Uh, then Omaha, Nebraska to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, uh, 43,000 pound load of cardboard boxes, 254 miles, booked at 620 bucks, got them 244 a mile. Then right out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, going to New Carlisle, uh, Indiana with a 44,000 pound load of paper rolls, <clears throat> 309 miles, booked at 725 bucks, got them 235 a mile. And they finished off with Plymouth, Indiana, going to Lebanon, Tennessee with a 40,000 pound load of dry goods, 393 miles, booked at 800 bucks, got them 204 a mile. So obviously, you know, shorter runs tend to pay quite well. Their average is really good. Ran for seven days, uh, Tuesday to Tuesday, grossed 6,100 bucks, ran 2,874 loaded miles at an average of 212 per loaded mile average. Uh, we're gonna Finish off with uh, Sydney, Ohio, uh, dry van coming out to Clarksville, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, and a final in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee with a 30,000 pound load of building materials, 527 miles, booked at 1,500 bucks, got them 285 a mile. Then Stevenson, Alabama uh, to Cedar Rapids, Iowa with a 43,000 pound load of rolled paper, 711 miles, booked at 1,200 bucks, got them buck 69 on that one. Then Cedar Rapids to uh, Mana, uh, Manawa, Wisconsin with a 42,000 pound load of grocery products. Looks like 277 miles, booked at 575 bucks, got them 208 a mile. And uh, Pistigo, Wisconsin to Mooresville, North Carolina with a 41,000 pound load of consumer goods. 988 miles, booked at 2100 bucks, got them 213 per loaded mile average. And you know, that's it for the week. The, these, these guys all did quite well. And as you can see, there's plenty of money to be made in the market. Even though the market's been really, really struggling, a lot of companies have been really struggling. Carriers, uh, you know, leased on owner operators. By the way, we both, we work with both types of truckers and we can help both types of truckers, but everybody is struggling. You know, even with us, you know, we're still getting under 7,000, under 10,000 uh, on our gross, but a lot of companies, a lot of people aren't even seeing this kind of money. $6,900 in six days, you know, um, 6,280, 6,100, you know, $5,900. Th these are real dollar amounts, you know, uh, you know, hitting 290 a mile, hitting uh, 228 a loaded mile, hitting 250 in a dry van. These are real customers who are ba basically able to make it through the difficult times. And this is what I invite you to do. Uh, basically get in touch with us and explore your options. If you're not making this kind of money, or a, you, you're a leased on owner operator, you're you know, basically being overcharged for the services that you're receiving, or you're being overworked and not making the kind of money that we're showing you guys here, then get in touch with us. Call or text us, numbers 801-448-6363. You can also get more information on our website at aftdispatch.com. Uh, you know, just simply fill out the right box. You know, click if you're a carrier or an owner operator and just go from there. So it's really, really straightforward. And guys, until next week, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.